Hello, hello! Perfidious Pete here. Down at the bottom of the pestle, waiting for the mortar of the Avatar project to grind my bones to make its bread in XCOM The Long War 2. And you know, I was gonna start things off by saying we just can't seem to catch a break here. I don't... The Avatar project, if you look at its spawn location, it spawned literally as many hops away as it possibly could have. This is like the maximal distance it could have spawned from us. And I was going to chalk that up to bad luck, but you know what? Having recently looked at the proposed patch notes for Long War 1.3, there's no chance in this. This is intentional. This is working exactly the way Pavonis intended it. Because the patch notes for 1.3, they read like the self-distributed 35,000 word manifesto of a hardcore right-wing anti-fun activist. They're like the kind of thing you would ordinarily find in an abandoned shed in rural Montana staked to the wall with a survival knight in a smear of blood. It's just... Uh, it's, well, all right, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna go off on a rant here. I'm just... I'm forewarning you. If you're not interested in listening to Pete rant about Pavonis again, you know what? Skip ahead like five minutes or so in the video. I'll probably be done by then, although no guarantees. Because like 90... And here comes the rant, so now's the time to skip. Like 90% of the patch notes for 1.3 are just a giant catalog of nerfs for every single class or game mechanic that even approaches fun or enjoyable. They're, if, if you enjoy something or it's fun or it's good, they're nerfing it. That's the way it goes. And then the rest of the list, the remaining 10%, it's a list of quote unquote buffs for classes that are so terrible, you still won't be willing to go anywhere near them even after their changes. Which, unfortunately, to me, sort of means that it looks like Long War 2 is going to go exactly the same way that Long War 1 went. In that it's going to be a steady progression of slowly winnowing away anything that's fun or cool until only the bitter, just the bitter, miserable grind is all that remains. Because this mod is not intended to be fun. It's not intended to be a game that's fun. It's tended to be a miserable struggle that is not enjoyed but endured. I just, I don't understand. It's like Pavona says some kind of fun Nazi strategy they're employing. No fun for you. You come back two years, try again. We'll still be no fun. <laughs> and it, it fucking baffles me. It really does. I don't understand why a game development company would behave like this. I really don't. And, oh, Pete, you're just beating up on Pavonis again because you think their game is too hard. Games can be hard. I've covered this before. A hard game is not the, not what makes many... I enjoy many games that are difficult. It's not the difficulty. It's just the fact that it's not freaking fun. That's the problem. Why? I, I just, I'm so confused by their behavior because what I don't understand is how does Pavonis think that this behavior helps them make a name for themselves and... More importantly, ultimately, how do they think that this sort of behavior will help them sell games in the long run? That's what I'm curious about. How does this sort of thing help your studio sell games when you eventually getting around to actually selling games and not giving them away for free? I'm genuinely curious. What Pavonis needs to be doing instead of what they are currently doing, which is this bullshit, what they need to be doing is paying attention to development studios like Red Hook or Hinterland or Blue Hole. Studios that listen to their players, take their feedback under advice, and you know what? When players ask for something, by and large, they're just like, hey, that's a good idea. We'll, we'll just give it to them. It's fine. Understood. Instead, Pavonis of nerfing decent classes into oblivion so that the shitty ones, by comparison, seem slightly less shitty, D don't do that. Instead, wh why, don't, why, don't you just make, why don't you just make the shitty classes not be shitty? Did you ever consider this as a potential possibility? The shitty classes don't have to be shitty. They can be just as good and fun as enjoyable as the classes that aren't shitty. And alternatively, when players ask for a change in a mechanic or, you know, an option to disable something that they dislike, for instance, <clears throat> itchy trigger tentacle, your response, Pavona, shouldn't be, oh, you know, somebody probably coded a mod for that. Why don't you go ahead and find that mod? Your response should be, Hey, you know what, man? That's a cool idea. We want to help you enjoy our game more. We'll totally put in a, a, an option to disable Itchy Trigger Tentacle. That doesn't hurt anybody. It just helps you enjoy our product more. Seriously, take a lesson from people like Red Hook Studios. When people said to Red Hook Studios, Hey, you know what? Darkest Dungeon is a great game. I really like it. But my only problem is 
the campaigns take a really long time and I just don't have that much time to invest in the game. Did Red Hook tell people to go fuck themselves? No, you know what they did? They're like, wow, you got a really good point. I can see where the campaigns are a little time consuming. You know what? Here, enjoy Radiant Mode. Here's just a way to play the game that doesn't take as long. And everybody wins. You get to have fun. We get to have fun. Everybody enjoys our game. You buy more copies. We sell a product. It's win-win. Did Hinterland Studios make wolves stop attacking deer when people figured out that the best hunting strategy for the long dark was to herd a deer into a wolf? Then, instead of killing the deer and killing the wolf, you just wait for the wolf to kill the deer and kill the wolf, and then get twice the meat for half of the ammunition? Hell no. Hinterland didn't do that. You know what they did? They applauded people's ingenuity and said, holy shit, that's a really, really good idea. As a reward, we'll let you make that wolf hiding deer skin into pants and a coat. It's, that, that, that's, that's the better way to come at this. When people complained that they couldn't see what their teammates were doing to help them out in spectator mode, did Blue Hole, the developer of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, say to the players, hey, tough shit, you don't like it? Quit to the lobby and start a new game, chump stain. No, they didn't, they didn't say that at all. What did they do? They went, hey, that's a really good idea. And then they added features to allow players to help their teammates plot a path to victory from beyond the grave. Taking shit away from the players, Pavonis, is not the answer. It's, it's like you don't realize this, but it's important enough that I'm, I'm going to say it again for another time. This game is not a contest. It's not a contest between you and the players to see who is better or who can win. You don't win when players lose. That's not how this works. This is not a game that you can win. You're, the game for you as a game studio and game developer is to make the players play the game and to want to buy more of your stuff. That's the game for you, and that's not a game that you win when the player loses. That's a game you win when the player has fun with your product. You win when the player plays your game. And that just, I don't, it, taking away players, people's toys, Pavonis, this, this typically is not considered conducive to fun. I'm, that, that's all, I, I just, I'm just putting that out there. Fun, it, it, taking someone's toys away is not how you help them increase their fun quotient. Also, this map can eat all of my dick because we're completely pinned in by these two pods and we're going to have to be fighting on the first turn. We have to keep Kathleen Madigan concealed because she is probably the only person who's going to be able to get anywhere near this objective. The problem is if we start spawning pods, Kathleen Madigan's concealment is probably straight up gone. Also, given the fact that reaction moves are a thing, any one of our people could get shot when we activate either one of these pods. And we're probably going to activate both of them, which is real shitty. So what kind of shots have you got here, Lee Mac? I mean, you have one really good shot. Okay, so if we put you on Overwatch, you can probably hurt someone at least very badly. Louis CK? You know, you have good enough shots that I wouldn't hate you being on Overwatch. Kathleen Madigan, I mean, there's, there's really nothing we can do with you. We would just put you on like a precautionary Overwatch. David Mitchell, I'm thinking we bring you back here and have you grenade this pod and see if maybe we can't score some kills. This also puts you in full cover. Are we really going to go for... I mean, yeah, it kind of seems like an Overwatch act. I hate this plan with a serious passion. David, tell what do you got? Okay, you have really good shots. I still despise this plan with the burning passion of a thousand suns, but we're on the clock here and I got, I got nothing better planned. So we're going to try and get some kills. David Mitchell does have a chance to score two kills here. Two of these guys would be within his kill zone range for max damage on a grenade. In fact, let's cheat it a little bit and center it on the guy who has a little more health. If we can get five off of this grenade point blank, the fall off damage in the next tile will be four. Or in a thing that makes absolutely no sense, the guy who got hit dead center will take four, and the guy next to him will fucking take six, bizarrely. Alright, we got the officer, that's nice. Even though that was a fucking graze, which is bullshit. Alright, more Balotin, here comes some dudes. A Lee Mac with a hit. Nice shot from Dave Attell, he's not taking any risks. No funny business, Dave putting bitches in the dirt. 
Okay, Kathleen Madigan has, I believe, hunkered down because she auto-hunkers when in cover. I took a shot at the Deacon and missed. We're going to get stunned for sure. Well, okay. 51% chance to hit but missed. Yeah, we're going to get flank shot, critical, and killed. Holy shit, Pickles, did we get lucky there. Okay, we got way, way luckier than we really had any right to. All right, Louis CK. I really just want you to move and handle this guy's shit. Here, move up here. We got the lightning reflexes on Lou. I think that shot, yeah, had a negative 25% chance to hit, which means it didn't even have a chance to graze. We're just going to go ahead and pop this guy with a grenade. I don't I don't want to leave there any potential for missing a shot or leaving some bullshit sentry back here. Nope, none of that crap. That guy is getting killed, and there's no two ways about it. Okay, we got to get rid of this drone to free up Kathleen Madigan to go do some work for us. We just got to figure out what the best way to handle that particular... I don't want Kathleen Madigan to have to ghost walk. That's really all I'm looking to avoid. We can never get a flank shot on a drone. David Mitchell can't... Lee Mack can't even see the drone. David Tell, if he can get a shot, would have a pretty good chance. He would have a pretty good chance at this gunner. Can you see him from here? No. How much closer do you have to be? Way closer. So we're probably going to have to stun that guy. But the drone is... We got we to gotta get rid of the drone or none of this matters at all. So we're going to bring David Mitchell forward. We're going to have him take just a regular weapon shot at the surveillance drone. Hey, pretty good damage from Mitchell. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's all right. I'm really worried about moving forward and, and actually spawning another pod because we, we can not afford that. Dave Attell could move up here and suppress that gunner for us. But we need, we need to have that guy wrangled. Okay, Lee Mack, kill the drone. We got to know what's up there before we can move forward. 91% chance for Lee. All right, Lee Mack puts the drone down. All right, we got that going for us. Now, Kathleen Irish Madigan, you no longer have to potentially ghost walk to go anywhere. We got to know if there's another pod back here. It doesn't look like it. Also, the other thing is Kathleen Madigan's got to get closer to our stated objective here as well. Still nothing. So we actually have a little leeway to advance on this gunner. David Tell is not going to be able to get a flank shot. We could move the Deacon here, and he will have a flank shot, which will encourage this man to move. Also, with his laser weapon, you know, the Deke has got a chance for a kill here. Max damage is six. Didn't quite get us home. All right. Insomniac. I'm thinking maybe if you can get this guy into grenade range, it's just grenade time. You're short. Okay. 56% chance to hit is simply not good enough. So what are we going to do? We're going to suppress this man. My suppression apparently popped another pod of like 96 to 100 guys. All right. Well, that guy took one for the team. And even though that hit was a graze, he's still dead. Are those guys active or not? I actually don't think that pod is active. We know where they're we know that they're there, which is nice, because that means Kathleen Madigan can't accidentally stumble into them. I really don't think these guys are active. They definitely are not, because otherwise Kathleen Madigan would not have the you're gonna activate a pod thing. So, what? I mean, we got five turns to play with here. We really don't have any need to rush. Kathleen Madigan, I want you to stay put right where you're at for a moment. Because these guys are all going to creep forward, but I want them to be able to creep forward and not activate another pod. Robert Webb, you're going to reload. And I think maybe we just put Webb on Overwatch. Lee Mack, um, I think we're going to have you reload. I'm going to have you move forward. Lou? You don't really need a reload. You're only down one bullet. But having you on Overwatch is also not especially useful. Let's go ahead and have you reload as well. Oh, right. Lou has free reloads. We definitely put that mod on the wrong trooper. 
So then we bring Dave Attell up here. And Dave Attell does so much damage and has such good hit chances. I think we let Dave alone for a moment. And we bring Kathleen Madigan over here to this corner of a fence. Eyes on the target. Okay, she can see the target, and she should be able to hop over the low elevation here. If we could get that pod to patrol into us, that would be nothing short of beautiful. David Mitchell, we're going to move you here, and I'd love to have you on Overwatch, but I think reloading is more important. Oh, right, David Mitchell also has free reloads. Well, we can do both, then. Well, that's a whole mess of guys. Dave Attell taking a poor shot through a plank of a fence, and I think Kathleen Madigan's probably going to get busted here. That's actually quite bad. If Kathleen Madigan remains unrevealed, that's really all we need. These guys also have clustered up very nicely. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's fucking perfect, then. There's also a pod of eight trillion fucking snake men back there. Well, this is a real slice of shit sandwich right here. All right, well, I mean, Deacon, we know there's a trillion guys up here. Can you hit enough of them to make it worthwhile? You could hit three. I don't know if these serpents, I don't know if that pod is actually active yet. They are not. Okay, Madigan, you're definitely ghost walking. This is... Uh, I don't know where that drone went. I want to get Kathleen Madigan around back, but I also don't want to activate that pod. We could two move it, step over to the fence, open the fence, and then try to get inside the building, but I don't know if we'd have enough movement to get in. Our other option would be to go around back, but then we have to crash through a window and we just straight up burn our own concealment. I don't like that plan any anymore. So let's go for the door plan. Kathleen Madigan is one tile of movement short of where she needs to be. Well, we're ghost walking this turn. We can ghost walk one more if we have to. It's time for ballsy play. We're going... I was going to say we're going big or we're going home, and then I was about to say, well, it looks like we're just straight up going home. We can't go too far forward because, yeah, we're going to tag. Okay, so if we come up here anywhere, we're going to probably tag a new pod. We're going to tag those Vipers, and we don't want to do that. So, Dave Attell, what do you got? Uh, I mean, okay. I don't suppose you could do something really cool with some area suppression, could you? I don't want to break. <sighs> Reload, please. We're not going to get a move with Dave Attell, which really sucks. What can we get out of an area of suppression? Can we catch... Th we can suppress three guys. I mean, that's that's pretty good. The problem is, is these other dudes that are in the back. Isn't one of them a rocketeer? That guy is a rocketeer. We would need, like, a confirmed way to kill that piece of shit. Or we'd need to get a flashbang deep enough in there. Can we... No, we can't even get close. Those rockets go like 85 times farther than the screen, too, by the way. That's the other drawback. So we bring Lee Mac over here. We could put Lee Mac on Overwatch. Um, we need the Deacon to get closer. But we also don't want him to forego cover in order to do it. I suppose we could have him double move. I hate that plan. I would really rather have him on Overwatch, but I don't want him near another unit and next to a car that could potentially explode. So we could bring Louis CK over here. That gives Lou a flank shot from where he's at, but that flank shot still only gives him a 10% chance to hit. That's freaking terrible. I'm, I'm thinking we just go for some Overwatch here. Unless Robert Webb maybe has a little better shot. 58%. All right, we're going to have to play this one really defensively. Lee Mack, you're on Overwatch. I guess we'll Overwatch with Lou, even though it doesn't make any sense. We're going to suppress. I mean...
mean, that suppression catches four people. That's a really good suppression. Any of those guys that move, they're going to get ruined by Dave Attell. Okay, Kathleen Madigan somehow did not... Oh, never mind. Wait, is Kathleen Madigan still concealed? Hey, Dave Attell got the kill there. Uh, shouldn't we be getting shots at these guys? Oh, no, they're still suppressed, so that shot had a 16% chance to hit. Lee Max covering fire with a kill! Yeah, well, I mean, we all knew what was going to happen there. The area suppression did not get a kill on that guy? How much health does he fucking have? That guy's got a lot of... Oh, fuck you and your grenade. Love the fact that the basic grenades from Advent still fucking destroy cover, though. Oh, and, you know, start us on fire, because, of course, that's totally fucking fair. So this guy throws a regular grenade that not only kills our cover, but also fucking sets us on fire, because, sure, it does. I mean, that's, that's perfectly sensible. Why wouldn't it? So Kathleen Madigan actually can get inside the building. She can't really hack the thing until this pod moves, but she can get inside the building. Oh, also, I am a fucking idiot. We should have called for evac like a dozen turns ago, because our evac is going to be like 95 years before it shows up. Lee Mac, you're shitting me with the one tile short of a kill there. Well, Robert Webb is in fire. He's also on fire. <sighs> There's also still a sentry back there that we got to come up with a way to kill or do something about. Louis C.K. has used his only grenade. We could run and gun with Lou, but there's a really strong chance we would spawn. And you know what? We're going to have to do it. If the Vipers come, the Vipers come. We're out of time here. Uh, the, the, the time for shits and giggles and funs and games is, is over. Don't miss, Lou. Alright, nice shot. 12 damage to the brainstem. Uh, where did this guy come from, though? How come every time I move, there's more guys than were there the last time I looked? It's like a fucking Russian clown car. They just keep getting more dudes. Seems doable. So Robert Webb is going to move and hunker down because he is on fire. I only have anecdotal evidence to this fact, but I do believe that hunkering down maybe helps you get extinguished faster. Now, I was going to say, I hope we can throw a grenade that far, but big surprise, we can't. Dave Attell can see that. Dave Attell can see and still suppress that sentry. You know what? I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is the play here. We just have Dave keep loading and keep lobbing the area suppression. If he can keep these guys locked down long enough for Kathleen Madigan to get the goods and get out. All right, this is Kathleen Madigan's last turn of ghost walking too, so it's gonna wear off at the end of this one. Which means Kathleen Madigan, when Ghost Walk wears off, definitely gets spotted by these Vipers. Yeah, so we're going to be battling Vipers next turn as well. Oh, good. More foes for the fray. That's just what we needed. I was just thinking that the enemy didn't have enough bad guys. I was, I was thinking, you'd be like, you know, they seem kind of outnumbered. They could really use a few more dudes up here. Get David Mitchell up here. I just want David close enough to start wheeling and dealing grenades on these guys. We're going to eat a rocket. Nope, that guy hunkered. Emac with four. We got nothing out of Dave Attell, though. That guy ran out of suppression and back into suppression. Well, it's pretty questionable judgment, but you know what? At this point, I'll take whatever the hell I can get. Three damage from burning, huh? And Robert Webb is still burning, so there's a non-zero chance... Horse shit. It's fucking horse shit. Okay, we can take Louis CK. We have no idea where those Vipers went, by the way. And if we move Lou up there, we activate another pod. That's real bad. Kathleen Madigan. 
can hack the thing without activating another pod, but that's pretty much all she can do. Actually, if we do this, she's revealed. I kind of feel like maybe we'd be better off to just try and wait a turn. You know what? Yeah. I mean, we've got some time. Lee Mac has a 2% chance to hit that man. Well, that's, uh, that's not good enough. We move there, we activate a pod. Well, we can just keep peppering the, uh, keep peppering the suppression with Dave Attell while we slowly bomb this guy with grenades. You want to sit back there and get grenaded all day? Fuck it, I'll let you. I'm not sure what we did the extra damage to. We got four, was that, were there civilians over there that we have accidentally blown up, blown to pieces? If there were civilians back there, I don't necessarily feel bad about it. We're just going to overwatch with Lou. Dave Attell can't see our boy back there anymore. Okay. How close can we get to hit? I mean, we need like one tile to hit this guy with a grenade, right? We need like two tiles to hit that guy with a grenade. It's a really risky proposition. At some point, though, somebody's going to have to come up here and take the risk. This does not spawn a pod. Whatever you say. And this should get Lee Mac close enough that we've cut down the angle. Yeah, we can drop it right in his pocket. So that's a guaranteed kill. And then I think we just bring Dave Attell up here and drop him into Overwatch. I'd love to have him reload, but we're not going to get the chance. Okay, Kathleen might again hunkered down. Kathleen was on Overwatch, so she should get a shot here at least. Yep, it did us absolutely no good, but we did get it. Louis CK, who are you kidding with that one? Let leave the Overwatching to Dave Attell, would you please? XCOM, fucking eat my asshole. Robert Webb is no longer burning. Well, that's good, because we're going to really need something out of Robert Webb. Also, Kathleen Madigan just got fucked. I hate that. This is the pod that spawned the ambush and took Overwatch. They don't get to also shoot Kathleen Madigan. That's so fucking unfair. <sighs> Lee Mack can kill the drone. Not entirely sure how useful it would be to have Lee Mac kill the drone. Louis CK could probably kill this Viper. Probably. Well, no, he can't because his run and gun is on cooldown for. I don't remember using it, but if you say I did, I mean I must have. Dave Attell can kill the drone for certain? Yes. 99% chance, and that drone is definitely dead at the end of it. The question is then, how the hell do we save Kathleen Madigan? Unless we can flashbang. Okay, we can flashbang too. But then we got to come up with a solution for that guy. We're not going to get anything better out of David Mitchell this turn. He also is in full cover. So we got the trooper and the sidewinder both disoriented. That's something. David Tell's actions are mostly spoken for. We're going to hack this chest. Uh, I mean, we really need this watch list, Kathleen Madigan. Yep, yeah, okay. Thanks for not getting it. Good work, girl. Nice, nicely done. Kathleen Madigan's probably still salty about the bullshit shot to the face she took, though. And you know what? She's rightfully salty. I don't suppose we could get on the roof, but we can. That's risky, but would we be out of line of sight of everything? We would. If there's another pod behind Kathleen Madigan, she's just dick. If not, she maybe has a slim chance to survive. All right, Webb, I mean, we got to get you further forward. Also, this may sound uh, relatively crazy, but I think we have to hit this guy with a concussion rocket. We've got to get him under control. 
Yeah, we also got some cheap damage out of it. Louis C.K., you have a flank shot now at what? You have a flank shot at the Naha. Well, that's, that's, that's a funny joke. All right, Dave Attel, go ahead and kill the drone. I don't want to see a fucking graze there either, Dave. All right. Okay, so we got a drone. All right, Lou, if we bring you up here, can you maybe stun one of these dudes? 95% chance to stun the trooper. More importantly, 92% chance to stun the viper. We have bad shots at both of them. Actually, we have 85 twice. You know what? Take that shot. Not good. Yep. Uh, that's an accurate assessment of your own abilities there, Lee. Not good, in fact, is exactly right. Did you see that one? Yeah, I did. I saw it, and I'm very disappointed in the fact that I was forced to see it, really. We're going to have Louis C.K. stun that guy. That's it. That's all we got. All right, Viper. Oh, good. Uh, Unfucking believable. Well, that's a hideous wad of reinforcements. And we have to hold out for two more turns because the Sky Ranger doesn't arrive for effectively ever. Perfect. All right, Lee Mack can go get us a kill with his shotgun. He can put a double barrel shotgun blast right in this dude's mouth. That kills him. This robot is phenomenally dangerous, though, because he can kill Webb whenever the hell he wants to. All he has to do is shoot at him. Alternatively, did I use, I meant to use a concussion rocket up here and I used the wrong rocket. That's very not good. Yep, that's, uh, that's real not good. Okay, Lou, you can get a flank shot on this guy that maybe generates a kill. I guess that leaves us options with Lee Mac because there's really nothing else we can get out of you. We could have you come up here, purposely flank yourself to, by the way, these two guys are still need to be dealt with. Dave Attell has no ammo, which means we're not going to get shit out of Dave. That's beautiful. Oh, wait, Dave Attell actually has a... You have free reloads? No, you have an expanded magazine. You have free reloads. Well, I mean, we could have Kathleen Madigan do what is going to be tantamount to suicide, but I'd, I'd really rather not have Kathleen Madigan suicide. She can also only kill the trooper, for certain. Can we come up with a scenario where we could maybe kill that Viper and then hide behind this car? Moving to position. It feels like falling back here is the only play that's going to work. We just fall back and wait for evac. Fall back, wait for evac. So this is one kill definitively for David Mitchell. It also makes the Naga potentially killable by Kathleen Madigan. So that just means we got to figure out a way to get the rest of the team somewhere that won't make them be dead at the end of the turn. For David Mitchell, that may just constitute running the hell away. Lou, I think we're going to bring you over here. I mean, you have a flank shot. It's just absolutely miserable. We could have Dave Attell reload. Rock and roll. I, I mean, I got I have nothing better for Dave Attell to do than just fall back. We've got to get, we, we got to get something on this Viper. The Viper kills a person. If we, if we leave him unwrangled, somebody is dead. That Viper will kill someone. Kathleen Madigan could forego all cover for a chance to kill this dude. Alternatively, you could just move her here and have him shoot him. Moving or hit him with a grenade. You know what, Kathleen? Don't risk your life foolishly. Let's go for some guaranteed damage. 85% is not guaranteed damage. Free damage from a frag grenade is guaranteed damage. Drop it in his face. If you do two damage, you're fired. Also, you'd have been dead, so I mean that was that was an empty threat, Kathleen Madigan. I hope you realized. Alright, Lee Mac. Beautiful. Okay. 
we're not going to be able to wrangle this Viper any other way, so we have to do this. I'm going. Also, Lee Mac is uninjured and does still have his armor. Everybody at the end of this mission is going to be fucking ruined. Hey, we grazed 100%. That's, that's absolutely fucking perfect. I love that. 100% chance to hit? Ah, it's fucking graze. You walked up and put both barrels right in his goddamn mouth, and what happened? Eh, he grazed him. That's, uh, yeah, it's perfectly fucking sensible. Not at all horse shit. We might as well take this shot with Louis CK, because it's not like his Overwatch is going to be any better. Yeah, you know what? That kill, Lou, that doesn't fucking make up for the graze. It really doesn't. That graze was 100% bullshit in every direction. I am super salty about this mission. Well, Robert Webb is going to get killed by a grenade. Not Lee Mack's just going to get shot. He's going to get one shot. Yeah, Lee Mack is dead. Follow-up flank shot will kill him for sure. Robert Webb could have died right there. Well, he didn't take the flank shot. And he, okay. Everyone on this mission is going to wind up injured. And also, we're still not out of the woods because, of course, we aren't. So, Louis CK, we need you to take this Overwatch, and you do have run and gun available. I don't remember whether we gave Lou armor piercing ammo or not. How are we going to get the robot? Okay, you know what, Dave Attell? You might be able to get the robot with just one shot. It's also your best shot, so do it. All right, well, we shredded one and got minimum damage. Perfect. But Lee Mac could reload and then potentially finish this guy off. Yeah, he can't miss. But of course he can fucking graze because every... Sh the graze mechanic is the stupidest fucking shit of all time. It, it is... M he has a 100% shot to hit. He's just, he's standing next to the guy. The man is begging to die. He's begging to die. And what happens? Eh, fucking graze. 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 You only ever graze. By the way, did we mention that the only shot that's allowed to actually hit anything in this game is a fucking stupid graze? You will always graze the enemy, by the way. This is, uh, this is a thing. It's only grazes here on out. The enemy always grazes you, and you always graze the enemy. It's perfect graze transparency. It only ever works to your disadvantage. Pete, how come he didn't shoot the robot that's flanking Lee Mac? Well, because we have one other guy who could potentially kill the robot. I say potentially because he has not a fantastic chance of killing the robot. We got to get two damage out of a shot here, which means we'll graze him for one or miss. I, you know what? You say, how about that? And I agree because I'm absolutely fucking flabbergasted that that worked at all. On the move. I don't suppose David Mitchell has a shot. No, but we can't put David on Overwatch at least. Not that it's going to do us any good. 50% chance to hit that missed. Where's my grazes, XCOM? Oh, well, you're dead then. No, it was time to go like five turns ago. Well, we have to pick up Louis CK because we can't afford to leave his gear behind. Pete, you seem super salty. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do seem super salty because I'm fucking super salty. Can't say that I don't help but feel like this mission would have been vastly better if Kathleen Madigan had not gotten bullshit shot. Or, you know, if just any one of a number of sundry and bullshit stupid mechanics hadn't happened, or if this mission wasn't just a piece of shit, or if Long War 2 wasn't just a grindy, miserable, generally unpleasant experience. Well, let's go ahead and leave then. This is a fun mission. We had a person die for fucking nothing, effectively. Anybody still got a shot? Nope. All right. Well, our one assault trooper is dead. At least we brought his body back.
Reinforcements that appear without warning in constant flanking positions is fucking amazing, isn't it? Love that shit. It's real good. Oh, Pete, the thing turned red. Yeah, because I'm always paying attention to what color the turn timer thing is. Constantly paying attention to that. It should have an audible warning that says, hey, reinforcements are coming in. You know, like maybe Bradford or one of the pre-recorded voice things that says, by the way, reinforcements are coming in, could come in and tell you that reinforcements are fucking coming in. Maybe. Just uh, spitball in here for opportunities to improve your game. Louis C.K. made the most attacks, despite the fact that I don't think he killed anyone. Really can't help but feel like uh, Louis C.K. might not have died there if every single 100% chance to hit we took the entire game wasn't a fucking graze. I'm covered with more salt than the salt flats in Dakota. Was Wait, are they in the Dakotas? No, they're definitely in Utah. But I still have more salt than they do. I have all of the salt. It's just... <sighs> Long War 2, you know what? You're just, you're not fun. You're really not. Like I said at the top of the episode, you're you are not a thing to be enjoyed. You are a thing to be endured. And hey, maybe some people are into that, but I have to assume that most people are not into that. I mean, Long War 2, you chased off Beagle Rush. I mean, seriously? Do you really think your game is going in the right direction when you're chasing off Beagles? Oh, you know, four troopers gravely wounded and one killed. So yeah, we got off light. Dave Attell picked up Chain Shot. The Dave Attell, the... Why could we never fucking select Chain Shot? That is definitely a bug, and also the second time that that has happened. Oh, let's take Grazing Fire so we can get more grazes. Perfect. I would rather have 10 aim and 10 critical chance against the target at half or less of their original hit points. Actually, I would rather have neither of these abilities because they both suck. What's the chance on Graze? Missed shots have a chance to become... 50% chance to become a Drake. Uh, targets with a dodge score. Subtract that score from the ability's success chance. So effectively, this is a lie. Missed shots do not have a 50% chance to become a Graze. Missed shots are going to have something like a 1 in 5 chance to also become a Graze. That ability is garbage. Fortify is also garbage. And you're saying, beat that ability is necessarily garbage. Hey, it's an extra chance for a Graze. Yeah, well, you know what? Executioner with plus 10 aim and plus 10 crit against the target at less than half of their hit points. That also reduces the chance for a graze by 20% because we get bonus aim and we get bonus critical, which somehow factors into the dodge thing. The more critical you have, the less likely you are to graze something because, sure, that's a fully transparent mechanic and not at all stupid. So we're just going to take Executioner then. Oh, and what did we get for our trouble? This. And a dead Louis C.K. It makes me want to go get a sad hand job. So I think I'm going to go do that. Probably it'll be self-administered, but still, that's what I'm going to do. If you enjoyed this episode... Oh, yeah, I can't even finish that sentence. You didn't. Long War 2 is bad. If you want to see more of me playing a bad game because I despise myself and I love to suffer, you might consider subscribing as well. Post new episodes of XCOM every single day. For now, at least, because really, man, I'm starting to wonder how much more of this mod I got in me. And I'm thinking it's unless something dramatically changes in the near future, it ain't that much right now, though. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.